one of those persons who always knew that I wanted to be an attorney. Uh, over the years, I had a number of different things that I would have contemplated in my childhood. I definitely remember spending many years wanting to be a pilot because I was very fascinated with travel. The uh, and over the years I've wanted to be an actuary and I've thought about being a teacher. It was in about fourth form that the desire started to grow for, for me to be an attorney at law. Driven I think to some extent by, by television shows like Matlock and LA Law. I had no idea what the, what the real practice of, of of law was like and even worse what the study of it uh, would be like and, and, and just how grueling it would be. The period of studying law was very important to me personally in addition of course to professionally. It was during the course of studying law that I met my wife Andrea. We met in the Faculty of Law at the University of the West Indies and our relationship developed significantly during the course of our time at the Norman Manley Law School. And that's actually where it was while I was at the law school that we became engaged and then married the year after. I remember when I was making the transition from uh, a university education to the law school that there were, there were persons ahead of me, one in particular, who counseled uh, several of us that we needed to, to, to learn how to write in a less academic way. And that was a difficult adjustment, I would say, especially in the, in, in the first year, from the, coming from the final year of, a, of, a, of an academic program. Uh, but it was something that was encouraged, taught, and honed at the law school and it's something that I think I benefited from in practice. One of the things that, that clients would, would say that they appreciated was that they would get a clear and plain answer from me, even if it was that I was telling them that the answer is not as clear as they would like. And, and that's something as I made the transition from being external counsel to being internal counsel, uh, that was something that I found extremely beneficial because as you would imagine in the corporate environment uh, Persons really really want you to get to the point. It's not a group of lawyers who who want to engage in In the type of discussions that we may find interesting uh, but which are for them part of a different discussion <laughs> into which the answer that we provide must feed. It's tremendously important for attorneys to contribute to the ongoing development of the profession and of younger or aspiring lawyers. I certainly found it to be of significant value to interact at the law school with experienced judges and practitioners who I might otherwise not have met and who could share not just their technical knowledge, but also insights gathered through their experiences. And this is an ongoing process. And so I remember, of course, after leaving law school, a judge calling me into his chambers after a matter and pointing out to me a tactical error I had made that I might otherwise have overlooked being satisfied with a successful outcome. There is also the importance of mentoring and encouraging persons coming up in the profession, whether formally or not. I started tutoring at the law school when the late Dennis Goff, Queen's Counsel, decided after many years that he would not continue. And while I thought that type of contribution was important and I was interested in doing it, I did have concerns about whether I had sufficient experience to be of, to be of use in that role. And it was Dennis who not only asked but also encouraged me to offer myself. Thereafter, for my next step at the law school, 
uh, Michael Hilton, Queen, King's Council, would encourage me to take a further step to become a course director, uh, which I can assure I would not have done without his strong urging. Uh, we had an interesting experience in with an assignment in the first year of of law school. I remember it was civil procedure and practice one, the family component, and an assignment was given. And as you know, first year students, we went through the usual approach of of running to the library and to practitioners and to find just the right precedent. And when we handed in the assignment, uh, the law school, as usual, the grades were published in by candidate number, as they would have been at the time. And, and I recall there was one A in that assignment. And the person who got the A didn't want any anybody to know, and it was not me. The, but I knew who had got that A. And the reason that she didn't want everybody to know is that she was concerned that people would think that she found a precedent and failed to share this good precedent with, every, with, uh, with everyone, which, which, is not what had, uh, which is not what had happened. She didn't, I think she didn't quite realize that she had done something somewhat different in her assignment uh, from 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 what everybody else did, the it was a useful learning experience for me as well because I reflected on it and thought that as I had prepared, I spent way too much time looking for the right precedent as opposed to researching to ensure I had all the right principles, and if I had found the principle that I had missed, I would have produced a much better result in much less time than I spent looking around for the right precedent. And that's something that I have not only learned and that stuck with me through the years, but it's also something that I have tried, uh, perhaps relentlessly, to convey to students and practitioners who have come alongside me over the years.